GPT-4 versus Gemini. Which one is better? Google just launched the new large language model Gemini, which seems to be a game changer. You probably seen the, um, their amazing video regarding its capabilities of reasoning, understanding uh, sounds, predicting what will happen, understanding what happens in the video, etc. Immediately as I saw this video, my mind was blown and I said, okay, what will OpenAI do now? Because <laughs> this seems to be way superior than what they're offering at the moment. So I started reading about Gemini and its capabilities and the data that Google is actually providing regarding their tests and how it compared to other large language models such as GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. And I decided to conduct a very short test of Gemini's abilities versus GPT-4's abilities. So what I will share with you today is a very short video, is a few logical riddles to see which one of their algorithms works better. We will know the answers and then we will compare what they have achieved or what was the reasoning for the solution provided by each one of, al of the algorithms. And afterwards, I will show you a simple snake game that I've requested both algorithms to generate using Python and we will see which one of them created a better game. Let's get started. I found an interesting resource online which basically provides logical riddles and let's paste them in both algorithms. The first one is, a store has been raided by looters who drove away in a car. Three well-known criminal, Steve, Karen, and Sammy, are brought to the police station for questioning. Inspector Aditya of the police extracts the following facts. None other than Steve, Karen, and Sammy was involved in the robbery. Sammy never does a job without using Steve, and possibly others. Karen doesn't know how to drive. Find the person who, in any case, is guilty. Yeah, you can pause this video and try to figure this out on your own. I'm going to paste both of them right here. Enter, enter. Let's see the speed of generation and also the results. Okay. So Bart says, let's analyze the information. None other than Steve. This means only one of them committed the robbery. Sammy never does a job without using Steve and possibly others. This means if Sammy is guilty, then Steve is also guilty. Karen doesn't know how to drive. This information becomes relevant if we determine that the escape vehicle was a car. Here's the breakdown of the possibilities. Case one, Steve is guilty. Steve could have committed the robbery alone. Steve could have committed a robbery with Karen. However, Karen wouldn't be able to drive the getaway car, so it wouldn't be a car. Steve could have committed the robbery with Sammy, etc., etc. Let's see the bottom line. Therefore, we conclude that Steve is, is guilty in any case. He could have been involved alone or with Sammy, but either way, he was involved in the robbery. Let's see what ChatGPT provided. Close sidebar. Okay. It's, so you can see it's a different reasoning process. From fact two, we know that if Sammy was involved, Steve must have also been involved. Therefore, Sammy cannot commit the robbery without Steve. From fact three, we know that Karen doesn't know how to drive. Since the looters drove away in a car, Karen could have been driving, making her less likely to be involved in the robbery. Steve is a person who, is, who in any case is guilty. Both algorithms got this correctly. Now let's move on to the next. A 
סלינה ג'ניפר מיילי wear a blue dress, yellow dress and green dress in an unknown order. It is known that if Selena wears blue, then Jennifer wears green. If Selena wears yellow, then Miley wears green. If Jennifer does not wear yellow, then Miley wears blue. What is the color of the dress Selena is wearing? Again, you can pause this video and try to solve this on your own if you would like. Let's see the results. You can see Bart is way faster. The conclusion Bart says is Selena is wearing the blue dress. While ChatGPT says, based on the given statements, Selena must be wearing a green dress. This is the only color for Selena's dress that does not lead to any contradictions. So blue versus green. Let's see what is the correct answer. Green. So ChatGPT got this right. And Bart got this wrong. Next one. Given the following premise, uh, wait, this is not what I wanted. Let's do this one. I'm not cherry picking, I'm just selecting what is the shortest. I didn't do this before the video, so it's not that I'm cherry picking and I obviously I'm not biased because I don't care who wins. I'm just curious to see who wins. So whenever an aspiring act auto writes on her blog, she writes every day for three straight consecutive days and then rests on the following day. During, during one particular week, she wrote on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Did she write on her blog the Wednesday of the same week? So Bart says, yes, the aspiring author did write on her blog on the Wednesday of the same week. And it sh shared the reasoning. Let's see what Chesh Chibiti wrote. Therefore, she did not write on her blog on Wednesday. As this was her rest day before starting her three-day writing streak on Thursday. So Bart says it did write. And Chesh Chibiti says it doesn't write. Now let's see what was the correct answer. No. Okay, so Bard was wrong again. ChatGPT for the win. Last one. And then we are going to move to the code. Hitting the enter button. We know that to make a cake we must use baking powder some cakes use strawberry as topping i've made a cake is the following statement certainly true certainly false or is there insufficient information explain your reasoning and the statement is i used both baking powder and strawberry for my cake let's see what bar says in conclusion more information is needed to determine whether i used both baking powder and strawberry for my cake And ChatGPT agrees, and this is the correct answer. Okay, cool. So we saw that ChatGPT um, got all these riddles correctly, while Bard had two mistakes. So this isn't too promising. Now let's move to the code. So we have snake py. I already had both of them generate the code for me. And it didn't change anything. I didn't change the prompt because I wanted to be like fresh and without me changing or adjusting anything because then it wouldn't be like a valid test. So this is the code Bard wrote. They both use import Pygame, which is a library. Now let's see Bard game. So this is how it looks like. We are going to start playing. Trying to get this. Oh no, this doesn't look too good. It's not eating the apple. Let's see what happens when it crashes. I can't even crash to my into my own tail, but I crashed into the wall and it completely threw me out. Threw me out. 
okay that was the bad version we saw that it didn't eat the second apple and it completely threw me out as soon as I hit the wall which makes sense now let's see what ChatGPT produced okay doesn't look I mean I'm not I don't think it looks as compelling but never mind let me get this apple okay got the first apple let's see if it what happens when it eats the second apple which was the problem with Bard okay this worked okay keep this keeps on working this is great I will eat one more apple and now let's see what happens when I crash okay you lost it tells me that I lost it allows me to press Q to quit or C to play again although this is a uh, isn't aligned and the, te the text is chopped down still it does allow me the functionality which is also better than bard and again no issues with the apples so i would conclude this is also a win for chat gpt for gpt4 it doesn't allow me to close the window also so i will just hit Control c okay guys um yeah so to conclude this was a very uh, short test about the differences between gemini and gpt4 one thing to keep in mind is after i did the research um as i said i was mind blown by google's video regarding the capabilities of bard or gemini i realized that the video um only shares I mean, the video shows the most sophisticated model that Gemini currently has or Google currently has, while Bard isn't using the most sophisticated model that was previewed in the video. So Bard is using Gemini Pro, and this isn't the most capable model that they have. They have a more capable model which isn't launched yet. So Bard the current versions that we have in BARD, the Gemini Pro, can be compared probably to GPT 3.5 or 3.5 Turbo. I don't remember exactly. While I was doing my research, I saw a few comparison. But again, uh, it was interesting to see like the small differences in performance. Obviously, um, the video by the Google team seems promising, but the platform, I mean, the model isn't yet available publicly, so it's a bit irrelevant. So we just, we will just need to keep on waiting until it will go live. For now, GPT-4 is still the winner, still the most powerful uh, player out there. And we'll see what happens next. I'm sure that uh, OpenAI is going to probably publish some new findings regarding um, their new model which is called Q something Q star um, yeah let's stay tuned this thing is moving very fast it's very exciting um, and I'm sure there will be a lot of interesting things coming up very very soon that's it for today if you enjoyed the video please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below if you have any other ways that you think we can use in order to compare these uh, models although it's pretty obvious that gpt4 is more powerful but still maybe for next videos if you have any resources that you can share with me regarding how you compare between models i will really appreciate it if you share in the comment section until next time keep on automating and take care